Okay, so Olga and Meredith, uh, it's nice to meet both of you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. So I guess the obvious thing about this music video that everyone saw tonight, We Sing for Ukraine and We Feed the People film, is that both works are about helping people in a crisis situation. Olga, you have a unique story about leaving Ukraine. Can we start with you? Uh, can you tell our audience a little bit about your story and, and how you came to America? Well, my story is not the worst one. Like uh, when we heard the bombing, my husband heard the bombing. Uh, 24th of February, he just uh, woke me up and our son and told us to get ready in one hour and uh, like, uh, and call his sister and her family, two little kids, his sister and her husband. So we just got in one car uh, and uh, moved to, to the West thinking on the way what to do. And then we, in seven days, we got to Chicago and now we are staying here with our friends. Uh, yeah, but uh, looking back uh, uh, and thinking about what could have happened to us if we stayed, um, we feel lucky. We feel lucky and happy. And uh, we are, well, happy to save our lives. We're happy to have our family uh, alive uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, um, we just uh, want to help in any ways that we can. From here, from the United States, we are in a free country. Uh, we uh, are safe uh, and like, uh, hands, uh, arms are not broken. You know, we can work and we can help our country. So, since we've been, since we've arrived to the U.S., we've been participating. Me and my son, I mean, we've been participating in uh, different charity events to support my country, to gather money, to to protest, to. Uh, to help our country receive all the support that we need right now to stop this evil. And uh, one of such projects, like probably one of the biggest ones, was uh, this uh, song by Ira Antalis, uh, We Sing for Ukraine. It was recorded in about, I think, in about one week after we have arrived to Chicago. And uh, it was very emotional. And um, those singers, beautiful singers who participated they were very supportive uh, we felt like we're well, a family there and yeah it was beautiful and helpful and we are we are happy to participate and to be a part of it after that we re recorded ukrainian version of the song and people are joining in because people uh, uh throughout the world people really want to find a way to help uh, it's it's a normal thing to uh, be willing to help somebody, not to kill somebody like Russians do. So the whole world is looking for some ways to help Ukraine in this song, this project is one of those ways. And how has the reaction to the song been so far? Reaction to the song? Oh, people are participating, people are singing, people are donating uh, and uh, it works. It works. It feels good to, to be useful. Yeah. I mean, well, me as a refugee, not, not, to be, uh, not to be drag on my country, not to uh, look for support, but to be able to help through such projects. I'm happy. Well, the film we, we just watched tonight, uh, Feed the People, is also obviously about helping others. Meredith, your movie um, about Jose Andres and the, the World Central Kitchen um, why did Ron Howard want to make this movie, as well as you know yourself and the other producers? Um, hi, everybody. Um, that's a great question. I think um, <clears throat> since you've just watched the film, I feel like you probably might have a certain uh, guess that he's a very charismatic and interesting person to want to make a film about. Um, and Ron had met him a few times over the years. Um, World Central Kitchen actually uh, was feeding people at the Paradise California fires a few years back and Ron had made a film uh, Rebuilding Paradise also for Nat Geo um, and he said you know I think he approached him he said he wanted to make a film about Jose and, and Jose said I'm happy for you to make a film but it has to be about the organization 
and about the volunteers and not just about me. So the film you'll see, obviously there's a lot of his personal story, but it's also about the organization and all the people that, that you meet along the way. I was wondering, uh, I guess some people would be interested in knowing about the different roles on a film and in particular, can you explain what Ron Howard was doing as the director on this film and, and what let's say you were doing as the producer? Um, so producers mean a lot of different things. I, I feel like it's really just um, anything and everything to make things happen. Um, so, you know, Ron will have certain ideas and, and um, there's things that he wants to happen creatively. And it's my job and the other producers to literally make everything happen. So, you know, if we want to film with Jose, we have to find a time, find a location, find uh, the cinematographer, a sound guy, all the, all the logistics behind that. And, um, you know, it's, you know, it's a, it's a fun collaborative creative process and also logistics. Was this uh, the kind of movie, like uh, Ron Howard's known for making big budget uh, Hollywood films, dramas, although he's done so many uh, documentaries as well. Is he hands-on? Is he literally flying into all, all these different locations or are different producers and crews assigned to different parts of the film and he's kind of overseeing the whole project? So, so each film it, for Ron is different. This one um, is... As you can tell, we have not, well, maybe I should clarify. Uh, as you saw, uh, it's, we started showing things that happened in 2010. So we, our film crew did not start filming in 2010. The World Central Kitchen team has been filming all along the way. And it's part of how they fundraise. They, they get to an area, they um, post about something and that's how they fundraise for the organization. So this film in particular, we had planned to embed with, um, with the organization but it greenlit in January of 2020. And then obviously there was a global pandemic. So what we were planning to do a lot of filming on the ground with the team, we wound up instead looking back at the archive and making it, Ron has called it more of an origin story. So, um, and this particular, you know, filming also in the pandemic was challenging. So we were kind of the, I, I can say this now we were filming sometimes without permission because it was, we weren't sure what we could do. Um, so, but Ron was very hands-on with all of the creative decisions with the editor. He spends time in the edit um, and in paradise, he spent time in paradise. Uh, there are certain times where he's, he's physically present. And uh, this time because of the pandemic, we also all learned that we could do our jobs remotely. As you can see right now, we're doing a Q and A remotely. So um, the interview with Jose was conducted via Zoom with Ron kind of patching in um, on something similar to this. And he could see him like, it was like he was looking right at him. So yes, he's very uh, hands-on where, where he can be. And when there's a pandemic, he's a hands-on on Zoom. <laughs> I was wondering what the two of you have learned um, from your personal experiences about people in crisis situations, whether it be in Ukraine or in a disaster situation, like, uh, like the many examples featured in this film. Olga, do you want to go first? Yeah, as I say. In crisis situations, you know, uh, it's hard to explain. Uh, we we are starting to reveal what the uh, real personality of a lot of people that we've known is. Uh, we've known many people for many years but now uh, it shows what they really are. And uh, particularly, particularly me, uh, I didn't think that I would escape, I would run away. I'm, I feel a little bit ashamed of that. And participating in charity events, such projects as we seen for Ukraine, and, uh, gives me opportunity not to think that bad about myself that I could have stayed from. I don't know what to say more. Okay, Meredith, what have you learned from uh, all the footage and the, and the things that you've witnessed with, the, with this film in terms of people in crisis situations? Olga, I feel like you shouldn't feel ashamed 
for leaving you you're surviving and it's not a thing to feel bad about um it's hard for me to answer when somebody is actually going through the, a real thing i think i'm coming at it from a you know document documentary filmmaker perspective from some from like a you know a, a far away kind of perspective um but i will say the world central kitchen uh, folks that I've dealt with and and Jose and Nate in particular who are in the film, um, they have done these activations all over the world through fires, through hurricanes, through all these things. And they have said there's nothing like what they're dealing with now in the situation in Ukraine um, in an actual, you know, active war zone. So, um, yeah, I, I can't really speak to it. Jose is shown flying into all these situations. And I guess kind of like similar to the Ron Howard question, uh, some might wonder why he has to be so hands-on. Um, is just, it, it, he addresses this a little bit in the movie when he says, I guess he has some guilt. Uh, he, you know, makes him feel like he's doing something important. But can, can you give a little bit more in, insight as to why he just always has that bag ready and, and he has to actually be the one going into these situations, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, he's a really, he's an incredible guy. I think you, you guys see that from the film and somebody asked him this at a Q and A just last week. And I think he, what his answer was, um, and one of, the, one of the volunteers, Elsa said it in the film, is that he, he feels like he can't just sit and watch something happening on the news. He feels the desire and the need to go there and do something. Um, and, you know, his opinion, he's, he says boots on the ground is the only way to, to figure it out. So he wants to go there and, and solve the problems. And I think the fa his family gets a little nervous about that being his way. And, um, you know, Ron Howard, it was answered, was asked the same question. And he said, he's, um, he's somebody that he's like, I prefer to tell the story. I don't know that I want to, you know, put myself in that much danger. I think Jose is that kind of personality. He seems like a remarkable person. Uh, I was wondering if there were any ground rules in terms of what you were allowed to show in the movie or not. Uh, you show him in a lot of flattering situations, but there are a few moments in the film um, that are not perfect, um, that, that I guess he was okay being filmed. Um, he doesn't look terrible, but, but we show him in, in all kinds of different situations. Was anything off limits with, with this movie? No, um, I have to say that one of the one of the early editorial criticisms we had was that we made him look too much like a saint because he is one of those guys who are like, is there anything wrong with him? He seems perfect all the time. And, um, you know, we I, we talked about it amongst our team with with Ron, with the editor. And we said, you know, there is this scene in the Bahamas where he does not look so great. And I think that, you know, you remember that from watching the film with where that woman was really upset. Um, and I think we, what, what was so wonderful about this film is Ron and Jose have a friendship and a trust, uh, with, with each other. Um, so when we, we put that in there, you know, Jose didn't have editorial control, but we sh we shared with him and we were saying, Ooh, I don't, I don't know what he's going to say here. And he, he didn't say anything. He didn't get, give any notes. Um, and at first we, you know, had, as he had said, he wanted it be, to be about the organization. So we were not going to include too much. He didn't want too much about him or his family. But as we got there later on, and, and as, as I was saying, too, about him looking too saintly, we realized that having his, his wife and his daughters, which just added a whole level of humanity to him that wasn't there. So um, some of the things that, you, you know, not showing him in a flattering light and, and showing too much of his family, those were two things that he was... Op opened up to us and instead of saying no this is off limits he really let us you know show everything which was really wonderful you touched on it earlier but i was struck by how covid emerged as a, a new kind of way that his organization could help people um, yeah. why was that so important to include in the film well, that was what was happening while, you know, in our, our shoot window, you know, that was, we were, we were planning to just, you know, when we first got the project with Nat Geo, we said, hey, we're going to embed with this organization and see what it's like to go through a fire or, you know, it would, be, it was maybe hurricane season or whatever it would be. But then the disaster we wound up having was COVID. So 
we filmed in New York, we filmed in Navajo, we filmed in California, we, we filmed all over the place. Um, but ultimately, what we realized was what they had, what they do now at, in COVID and what they were able to do, which was really activate globally, they had never done that before. And if you saw that to start, you, you wouldn't really understand how amazing what they do is. So we kind of went back and said, okay, here's when Jose was putting everything on his credit card and, and breaking down. And here's when this happened. So that's why we kind of chose those uh, specific activations. And even though there have been plenty more, um, and then it builds to COVID where they, where they were everywhere. One of the things that this film, as well as the situation in Ukraine, both show is how people's lives can be so easily turned upside down by war, disasters, and even a pandemic. Um, no one's immune to this. Um, what have both of you learned about in terms of um, how you just never know in life um, what can come next? What can come next? I have learned that everything can come next. We've been building our lives uh, for 20 years with my husband. We have planning, we have been planning our, like uh, being old, how we would live next to a river somewhere we buy a house and something like this. Uh, we had been building our happy lives. And uh, in one second, when I heard the bombing, I just realized that it could be destroyed like this. Lives, buildings, whatever. You, you can never know. And uh, um, the only thing that uh, was real and now is real is protecting my only son. My, that's it. That's what, what I'm thinking about. And everything that mattered before now doesn't matter. I'm just following my mother's instincts. It's sad. But... This. And Meredith? Um, again, I, I feel really it's hard to follow. Um, and Olga, that's I'm sorry that this is what you're going through. Um, I think. Um, you know, it's it touched on in the film, and I think uh, everybody, if, if you had a, if you're in the, the, you know, this part of the country, you might have had a flood in your basement, you know, natural disasters are happening all over the place. I know I have family in California with the wildfires uh, on the, you know, in New York, we've had 9-11. I think all of us um, have seen our shares of disasters, and I think everybody this is a negative Q and A. Here we go. But I mean, everyone has seen a lot of, of things happen, and I think what's what's inspiring about um, the film and, and World Central Kitchen and, and the film We Feed People is that sometimes it feels overwhelming. Everything that's going on, you don't know where to start. And I think seeing Jose and seeing that organization is to me so inspiring because you're like, you know, it's really simple. You just have to start somewhere, one plate of food at a time, whatever it is, whatever you can do yourself. Um, in this case, we helped make a movie to show people about this wonderful organization and to shine a light on it. But I think everybody in some way is impacted by natural disasters. And if they're not, they will be at some point. Well, it is inspiring and, and I'm inspired and also, by the may, Yeah, go ahead. May I add just a, uh, these disasters, this war, um, also reveals uh, how many um, great, beautiful, and kind people around uh, are surrounding us. Uh, we uh, Ukrainians, in particular, uh, right now, uh, find support uh, in places they uh, would never have been. Uh, they get support from people that had never seen them before. Uh, it's amazing, and. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, still, still, you feel hope for the humanity. You, you feel that um, it's not so bad because uh, you know, there is evil, but there is a lot of good things, and uh, people are united. People are uh, fighting for um, making this world a better place. Um, 
and, and no one's doing more uh, than Jose. Uh, the film is inspiring. And uh, I was wondering, Meredith, like what, what's your number one takeaway from uh, looking at his personal life and the organization spending all this time in making this movie? Um, you know, I think what what's really interesting uh, about the organization, I said it a little bit about the, you, you know, you don't know when to start. So you sometimes I feel like people just don't do anything because it's it's overwhelming to figure out where to start. Um, so that's I feel like one of the things. But um, also, I think um, remembering the humanity in in giving and helping, um, you know, you don't want to just as they say, throw a paper towel at somebody, you want to you, you wanna make sure that you're helping in, in a real way and also listening to what the people need. I think that story he tells of um, how he was, they were giving beans in Haiti and the women said, this is not how they like the beans. And then he figured out, okay, this is how they like it. So um, not, not forgetting to, to, do, to do good just to feel good. It's, it's really to help others, not, not to help yourself. Well, I want to thank the two of you um, for sharing your stories, Olga, your, your very personal story, and Meredith for, for making this film. We show good work being done all over the world. I hope it does inspire a lot of people to do more. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone.